Hi brothers and sisters, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Pamela. It is nice to meet you. If you are returning back to do this James study with me, um, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you are interested in digging into the Word to find out what the Word says about things in general, life, salvation, just what's going on in the world, where we are. I just got in my prayer closet and, um, you know, I didn't... I was before I got in, I'm like, Lord, I just need something. I just need a word or something just for myself. I mean, I'm so ready for the Lord to come get us. I'm so ready to escape and to get out of here. Like, me and my husband are really just abiding just day by day. And sometimes, like, talking with my husband, he'll be like, this summer I'm going to, and, like, when he says it, it's, like, a cuss word to me because I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to be here this summer. I really just want to be with the Lord. Like I'm, I'm ready to go. This is not my, this is not my home. This world is getting crazy. It's getting set up for the Antichrist, and I'm just ready to get out of here. I'm, I'm ready to go experience heaven with the Lord. So, I know that the rapture of the church is so soon. It, it is so soon, and so. The Lord, that is really all he's given me. Um, I know back, when was it? I think it was end of November, beginning of December, and I think I shared it. But he did say on the day, um, on the day of, we will know in our spirit. The Holy Spirit will bear witness with us, so we will know. And then I found all kinds of scripture where everybody who was raptured knew, or even Noah in the ark knew. He knew seven days before... Uh, the flood came. He was actually on the ark for seven days before the flood started, so he knew. And he actually knew 100 years in advance is why he started building the ark. And he knew what was going to happen. So, um, but even with um, Elijah, Elijah knew, uh, and everybody in town knew. Kept telling Elisha, you know that Elijah's leaving today. So, you know, they he knew the day, and so... When the Lord had said, we will know on the day. And then he showed me several scripture afterwards where people knew what was going to happen before it happened. So um, I stand, um, I just stand on that and know, but I'm like, I'm not feeling it today. So we are not getting raptured today. But um, just trying to abide in the time. And it's like, Lord, I just need a little bit of encouragement because some days are easier than others. I've really been finding things to do. I, I really just, I've been organizing my house. Uh, I got things like, I bought a ton of like them containers that are airtight. My, my new, my pantry is like new now. Like everything is in air sealed containers. No more bags of chips rolled up with clips on them. No. You open a bag, you eat a couple chips out of them. They're in a sealed container. Crackers container. I even got coffee. I got my coffee little station over there and set up real nice and pretty. I've been trying to go through and I made out a list so that I can get, you know, chores done and things done. Things that I want to get done before the rapture so that when somebody comes into my house, they're not going to come in and go, oh, it's going to take forever to clean out. I just want to go and get rid of crap. I've lived here for almost five years, so I kind of want to, you know, five years worth of stuff. Let's get this stuff cleaned out. So that's what I'm working on. Today I've been trying to figure out what what can I do. I made out uh, a list of like different foods, uh, chicken options, uh, hamburger options, and then other options. That way I can do a meal plan for the week. Um, and I went on Pinterest. That was real helpful. So I got some dinner ideas. There's just part of a list that I made and then I copied it and made it prettier. So we tend to eat the same foods over and over and over and over. I'm getting sick of it, and it doesn't work with the weight. So I've been trying to look at other options and different things to do, so I'm real excited to do that and then get a meal plan going on. So um, me, I tend to be a last-minute person with food. My husband will call like 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock sometimes, and he's like, what's for dinner? I'm like, I don't even know yet. Sometimes I don't even decide what's for dinner until like 3 o'clock, and then I unthawn it in the microwave. I need to get myself in order. So, <laughs> abide in the time, a day at a time. I don't want to talk about next year. I don't even want to talk about a month from now. 
I just want to talk about, let's just talk about today. Maybe tomorrow. But I don't want to talk about a week from now because I'm really hoping. Uh, this is a bead, which I believe it is a bead. Am I right, a bead? No, no. March 15 is the new year, though. But I'm really still trying to stand on Psalm 120, which is for 2020, a rescue me from lying tongues. So I'm really hoping that the rescue is still going to be out uh, still going to be going on for 2020. So, of course, in the United States, it's not 2020, but according to the Hebrew calendar, it is. So, we are going to stick with that until March 15 comes around. If we are still if we are still here, and then, then I'm just going to cry. I don't know. So, anyways, <laughs> let's just move on. Let's get started in James. Today, we are in Chapter 3, and it's about taming the tongue. And I know this is my biggest thing. I don't really have, I don't really have a hard time. Like my language isn't horrible, but I notice sometimes I can get snappy with my husband. So, so, and he, he usually deals pretty good. I don't, he usually deals pretty good with me. We don't really argue too much. There's days that we'll just get snappy with each other and that's not good. So I, I could, this is my thing right here that I could used a little help with so I will be thinking of myself when I read this <laughs> all right so let's go not many of you should become teachers many my fellow can I start this over not many of you should become teachers my fellow believers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly we will stumble in many ways anyone who was never at fault in what they say is perfect able to keep their whole body in check but we put bits into our mouth of horses bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example although they are so large and are driven by strong winds they are steered by a very small rubber rudder whenever the pilot wants to, wherever the pilot wants to go likewise the tongue is a small part of the body but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. Set the whole course of one's life on fire in itself, set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures, are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human can tame the tongue. It is a reckless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praises and cursing. Some brothers and sisters, this should not be. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring, my brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. And there's two kinds of wisdom. Verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it, about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, inspired, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, you will find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So that was pretty quick. I caught from that peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. I had that in my little, I don't know if you can see that. And it's just because, you know, I'm a peacekeeper. Like I really, I, I try to be keeping the peace. <laughs> I try to be sometimes, um, I, I don't really have a whole lot of, 
uh, contact with the world, which many of you know, I live out here in the middle of nowhere, right where God wanted me to be right for these times. And so I do have to say being out here in the last days, um, has been great for me, especially since last year, uh, because sicknesses don't really hit us like it used to hit me in the city. Not only that, but I don't have a lot of things. I'm not hearing about a lot of things in the world. I'm not having a lot of communication with those who are living in the world. Although at the same time, I'm not having communication with those besides YouTube of those who are living for Jesus and is encouraging and uplifting. So I'm really just getting everything that I need from the Lord or, you know, if my husband has time to sit down and talk with him. As a matter of fact, so I'll, I'll chit chat with you guys for a minute. Um, so a couple years ago, um, Adam and I had decided that we were going to stop eating anything unclean. And, you know, just reading because we're like, Surely, I know that Jesus came and, you know, changed the laws for a lot of things and stuff like that. But we just kind of like figured, okay, even though a lot of people are now eating pig and a lot of people are eating lobster and crab and shrimp and stuff like that. Still, we're thinking if God made it unclean, he made it unclean for a reason. And surely just because Jesus came back, it's still unclean because pig... They're really gross. They're really gross. And then a lot of things like shrimp, crab, and stuff like that, they're like bottom feeders. They don't, nothing good, nothing good comes out of eating them. Just, um, but I just been going through, and this is why it's really good to get into the Bible and read it and go through and read the whole entire Bible and don't just skip around because, you need to make sure you know the word. There's things that you forget. There's scripture that you forget. I'm coming across that now, reading in Romans. And matter of fact, I'm going to skip there because I'm going to be reading in Romans um, right after I get done chatting with you guys. But um, the thing is, is since reading in Romans, and I just got done reading about how uh, all food is clean. It's not labeled unclean anymore. So I was talking to my husband about that. And so... We we're just kind of debating like I don't I'm not going to have conviction if my husband brings home pork or if he brings home shrimp. I'm not going to have conviction on it because I after reading Romans, I'm like all food is clean. And if you eat if if you eat um, if you stop eating pork too and this and that, it's really good for you to read Romans so you can understand it. Uh, uh, 1420 was just funny because uh, 1420. My husband should never forget that because it's the last four digits of his social security number. So, um, I was like, why did I remember that? And you did it. He's like, yeah, I know. But do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone to stumble. So, um, basically this whole thing was, is don't be judging people because you eat everything and their faith is weak and they don't, they just eat vegetables, which I thought it was a very interesting choice of words in here. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak only eats vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does for God has accepted them so but I know in here it does talk about if you say you gave up this food because you thought it was wrong if you're having conviction when you go to do it then don't do it then it's sin if you do something feeling the conviction then it's sin but reading this I feel better my husband I think is still kind of working through it He's like, he called me a little while ago because we're going to try going to Costco. He's like, I may spend $400 at Costco, but it'll last a lot longer. So, uh, he's looking at trying that. So, um, but he's, he makes sausage and stuff and sells it to the guys at work and stuff. And he's like thinking about getting pork because pork is cheaper. Like the throw in with venison and, you know, just whatever. So he's just kind of going, he's like, I'm going to call you back because I really want to keep going over this. I really want to keep talking about it. My husband's funny. He'll talk things. He'll, he'll talk it over and over. He'll either talk himself into it or talk himself out of it. <laughs> but he, he's a talker. 
but he has not called me back, so he must have got really busy. So that's where we're at. I am, I gave up pork for a long time, and then I went back to it, and then my husband's like, we just need to get rid of it, and I'm like, okay, well, it was really hard in the beginning, because of course, you know, we're thinking of all the things you have to give up, you're thinking pork steak was my absolute favorite, and then shrimp fried rice, I'm like, fried rice is never going to be the same. Shrimp fried rice is not shrimp fried rice without shrimp. Sorry, but it's just not. <laughs> and I'm not a real big shrimp eater. I like breaded shrimp and stuff. But anyways, you guys probably don't care. I'm just mumbling. Just some things going on in my life. I don't have a lot going on. So, you know, the little things sometimes seem real big. But it's a pleasure chatting if um you sat through this. and <laughs> Good for you. But I'm going to go. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that you are staying uh, filled up in prayer and staying in your word. We need to be as close to the Lord as we can get during these times. And if you're drawn close to him, he's drawn close to you. And you are going to be hearing what he has to say. So turn your TV off a little bit more often because the Lord will bless you. And uh, there's nobody else that we need to be hearing from right now rather than the Lord. So let's draw in. I will see you in the air if I don't see you on another video soon. Until then.